We'll go ahead now. Oh. 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 Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Obunaktu Sahavir Yankaravahai Tejas Vina Vadita Mastu Mavidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 May the divine being look over us lovingly as a mother and father. May the divine being support and nourish us as a mother and father. May we have the strength and skill to study together the art of spirituality. May no misunderstandings arise amongst us. Om, peace, peace, peace be unto us and to all beloved beings everywhere. Hari Om Tat Sat. All right, Haima, please do begin. Okay, Brother Shekhar. Good evening, everyone. Namaste. We are on page 614. The side heading is the mother's omniscience. That's where we are at. I'll be starting there. God is omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. Holy Mother was endowed with all these characteristics but she did not manifest them all at once. She knew everything collectively, sarvajna, as well as individually, sarvavit. She was aware of the past, present, and future of her disciples, <coughs> and she guided them on the path of blessedness. She did not embarrass them by revealing their shortcomings in front of others. Fault finding was not in her nature. She removed her disciples' fear and delusion by reassuring them with her motherly love and affection. Okay, let's just stop there for a moment sure. because this is so instructive for us. Very much. She removed her disciples' fear and delusion by reassuring them with her motherly love and affection. That motherly love and affection is just as available to us as it was to those who were with her before she left the body in 1922. We may have to reach out a little bit more than being in her physical presence. But as Sri Ramakrishna says, all it takes is one sincere tear, one sincere tear to get their attention. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so when we're afraid, feeling deluded, and of course, how can we not? All we need to do is cry out to them. Cry out to them. Please, give me refuge. Give me reassurance. Thank you, Haimo. She removed her disciples' fear a delusion by reassuring them with her motherly love and affection. Many of them were overwhelmed when they witnessed her divine power. Vedanta says that the absolute truth is beyond mind and speech, but it's not beyond reason. Human beings are guided by faith and reason, in other words, by the heart and the intellect. The intellect clears the path of truth and the heart pushes forward along it. Okay, I'm going to ask her to read mm -hmm. that again in just a moment. Sure. But let's, let's be clear. You know, this is what I mean by holding two thoughts at one time. The, and the intellect has one system of thinking. The heart has another. The heart receives 
these higher truths and then they're presented again and again to the intellect the intellect then by manana by manana by by taking these things in and assimilating them if i prepared the most delicious dish that there was to have that you could ever have and all you did is look at it and think about it it wouldn't do you the least bit of good i mean there it would be this most delicious dish and there there it is if you just looked at it and thought about it it wouldn't do you a bit of good you have to take it in you have to digest it and what is digestion digestion is taking it into the parts that we can then assimilate so this is exactly what's being said here so i'm going to ask you please to read that again vedanta says that the absolute truth is beyond mind and speech but it's not beyond reason human beings are guided by faith and reason in other words by the heart and the intellect <clears throat> the intellect clears the path of truth and the heart <clears throat> pushes forward along it blaise pascal said we know the truth not only by reason but also by the heart please repeat that sure blaise pascal said we know the truth not only by reason but also by the heart people invariably fail when they try to understand the truth only through reason because the intellect has limitations people invariably fail when they try to understand the truth only through reason because the intellect has limitations truth stands the test of experience there are some episodes of the mother's life that we cannot explain but we shall present them to the readers and let them come to their own conclusions <coughs> In the early days when Holy Mother was staying at the Nahabat in Dakshineshwar, Yoginma would visit her and the master once a week. Yoginma used to worship Lord Shiva in her Calcutta residence every day, and she used bilva leaves for the ritual. She would pick fresh bilva leaves from the Dakshineshwar garden and carry them to Calcutta. Calcutta, but by the time of worship, the leaves were dried up one day the mother asked yogin do you worship using dried bilva leaves surprised yogin ma replied yes i do mother how did you know about it the mother calmly said during my meditation this morning i saw you worshiping with dried bilva leaves on the evening of 20th september 1918 sarajubala sen came to udbodhan house mandakini was rubbing oil on holy mother's back nalini and other women were also near the mother the mother was then praising yogin mas and golap mas visions and spiritual experiences nalini asked aunt i hear so many people get deep meditation and visions but i don't experience anything i've been living with you for such a long time but what have i achieved holy mother replied why do you not get these experiences people have experiences because they have so much devotion and faith look one needs faith and devotion what do you have Nalini said, "Aunt, people say that you are omniscient. Is it true? Well, could you tell me what is in my mind?" Holy Mother smiled. When Nalini insisted, the mother said, "They say that out of their devotion." Then she continued, 
I am nobody. The master is everything. She folded her hands and bowed to the master's photo and said, all of you pray to the master. Let there be no ego in me. A woman from Dhaka then said, my son says, what shall I say to the mother? She is Jagadamba, the mother of the universe. She knows what is in every mind. Sarajubala replied, many of us address the mother as the divine mother of the universe, but the Lord alone knows the extent of our conviction. When skeptics like us proclaim her divinity, it is a sort of paratry. What is paratry means, Brother Shankara? It's simply repeating the words that others say, like a parrot. So, we, you know, if we, if we, yes, uh, I see that. If, if, if I hear what the master says in the gospel and I simply repeat it back to you, like uh, particularly if I, if I don't really understand it, a parrot doesn't, when a parrot says sita, 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 it. He's been taught to say Sita, 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 but he doesn't know what he's saying. He doesn't that is true. have You're any right. idea. So I, that's paratry. Paratry. Okay. Uh, we, but don't think that even paratry is is bad. Mm -hmm. We we parrot these words, then slowly and slowly, if they are meaningful to us, we make them our own. We slowly make them our own. And then we begin to grasp their meaning. Yes. Then they go from being paratry to where we, we begin to say them in our own words. We may re first repeat the words, then we repeat them with some understanding, then they become our own words. Yes. Then it, it's just as in your training. Like a mantra. As your, like as your training, Haima. Yes. You, know, you learn certain things in the beginning, so to speak, by rote. Mm -hmm. That's paratry. But it, we mustn't think there's anything wrong with it. Exactly. It is simply the beginning. It is simply the preliminary. Okay. Then you. we go on and then we, we begin to uh, have some understanding of the words. Then we make them in the, our own. Then we can write a poem about them in our own words. That's true. Thank you, Brother Shankar. Mm -hmm. Holy Mother smiled and said, you're right, my child. Sarajubala continued, the mother is a veritable goddess. If the mother does not make us understand this out of compassion, is it possible to comprehend that? Utter absence of egoism is the convincing proof of the mother's divinity. A human, a human being is full of ego. Every day we see hundreds of people prostrating themselves before the mother and calling, calling her goddess Lakshmi, mother of the universe. Were she a mere human being, she would be puffed up with pride. <clears throat> Has a human being the power to withstand so much honor? Let's just stop there. Yes. When Swami Vivekananda spoke the first time at the Parliament of World Religions. When he finished, people just rushed forward. They were literally walking over the chairs and many of them were women and they were being very worshipful. And one woman stood in place and said, oh, young man, if you can withstand this, you truly are a saint. <laughs> this adulation, because that's what they were doing. They were just pouring out their adulation. First, they'd given him a, you know, a two minute standing ovation. Standing ovation, yes. For, for no other reason than he simply said, sisters and brothers of America. And he was asked, why did that have such an effect on them? Why did that have such an effect on him? Can you imagine his answer? It's, he said in reply, it is because I have not had an impure thought since I was 16 years old. That's why. 
I have not had an impure thought since I was 16 years old. And so he was able to withstand that adulation, as we know, and not let it puff him up with pride. These, these are the reasons, these are the reasons that when we take these beings to our heart and we ask them to transform us, to share with us that divine power, that divinity, that mm, lack, that, that moving from a centeredness on I, me, mine, to thee, thou, thine. They, they do it. <laughs> so please read that again. Just this yes. Thing. Every day we see hundreds of people prostrating themselves before the mother and calling her goddess Lakshmi, mother of the universe. Were she a mere human being, she would be puffed up with pride. Has a human being the power to withstand so much honor? Please, the mother, pleased, the mother looked upon Sarajubala, her eyes full of grace. Prafulla Gangopajaya recalled. <coughs> One day, while offering food to the master, I saw a current of light falling <coughs> on the offering from his picture. Referring to this, I asked the mother, Mother, is this the vision of mind true or a fantasy? If it is a fantasy, please do something so that I can be free from it. <coughs> Good for her. Yeah. After a brief pause, Holy Mother replied, No, it's not a fantasy, my son. You have seen right. Do you know so what I see? Read again what it is that he saw. Okay. And this is what is happening when we offer food to the master and to mother. This is what is happening, whether we can see it or not. This is what is happening. Please read that again from the Prafula beginning. Prafulla Gangopajaya recalled, one day while offering food to the master, I saw a current of light falling on the offering from his picture. Referring to this, I asked the mother, mother, is this vision of mine true or a fantasy? If it is a fantasy, Please do something so, so that I can be free from it. After a brief pause, Holy Mother replied, No, it is not a fantasy, my son. You have seen it right. You have seen right. Do you know what I see? Prafulla asked. Yes, I do. Does the master accept the food that I offer to him? Do you also accept the food that I offer to you? Yes. How can this I understand? Let's just stop there. Yes. Notice sure. the complete unqualified answer. Yes. Said yes. Right away. No yes if, no yes whether, no, no, just yes. <laughs> so when we sincerely offer the food, this is what's happening. This is just exactly what's happening. Does this make us want to offer the food? <laughs> Please go ahead, dear. How can I understand this? Mother replied. Well, have you not read in the Gita? Gita that God accepts the fruit, flowers, water, and other things that are offered to him with the devotion. With Surprise. Devotion. 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 Yes, with devotion. Surprised, Prafulla exclaimed, are you then God? At this, Holy Mother burst into laughter. <laughs> well, she might. Uh, are you then God? <laughs> yes. She is indeed God, goddess. She is indeed. You know, that's why she laughed. She laughed too when, when Girish Ghosh uh, recognized her. You know, he's, he, he, he recognized her as the goddess who came and sat on his bed and healed him when he was a young man. Because he'd never seen her without his, her veil until he went to Jairambati. He went and he saw her and he said, it's you, it's you. It's the same one that you, you came. You were the one who came 
who are you? And what did she do? She just laughed. But she said later, my heart is full, a pitcher of bliss. Okay, dear. It was 13 November, 1913. After the Vesper service, the mother lay down on her bed in Udbodhan house. Yogin Ma was also there. The mother was a little drowsy. Suddenly she got up and said, is Purna dead, Yogin? Yogin Ma was amazed to hear this question and asked, who has told you this mother? The mother replied, I was asleep. Suddenly I heard someone saying, Purna is dead. Yogi Ma then confirmed, yes, mother, Purna died this afternoon. I did not tell you, mother. That evening, the mother talked about Purna and expressed her sorrow. Some days later, Lal Mohan, later Swami Kapileshwarananda, Kapileshwarananda received initiation from the mother. A doubt arose in his mind. What have I done? Alas, I took initiation from a woman. <laughs> you see the patriarchy of India. Yes. Alas, what have I done? I've taken initiation from a woman. Exactly. exactly. Okay, please. <laughs> Gradually, this created se severe mental anguish. Finally, he decided that he would give up the mantra if the master did not remove his mental conflict. The next day, Swami Premananda sent Lal Mohan to Udbodhan house from Belurmat with milk for Holy Mother. As soon as Lal Mohan bowed down to her, she said to him, look, I did not give you the mantra. It was the master who gave it. A few days later, that doubt cropped up again. He thought, I shall believe that the master has given me the mantra only if Haryan Babu tells me that he has received power from the mother. Some days later, during the master's birthday festival, Haryan Babu went to Udbodhan house, bowed down to the mother, and then went to Belur Mat. He told Lal Mohan, today I have received, received a special power from the mother. Thus Lal Mohan became free from doubts. So, so yes. again, let's, let's just pause and reflect sure. a moment. Okay. Reflect a moment on the fact that there is no judgment, no condemnation for our doubts. And if we're sincere in our persistent desire to have the doubt removed, it will be removed. And it may be removed exactly in the way that we ask, as he, as this Lal Mohan said, I'll believe it if this Babu tells me, Harin, whatever his name was. Yes. Harin Babu. Harin Babu. Harin Babu. <laughs> yeah. And so what happens? Harun Babu tells him. Yes. <laughs> so let us just be absolutely certain in our hearts. Let the, the faith, the faith, you know, it's not beyond reason, as was said earlier. But let's just hold the faith in our hearts that when we ask, I mean, how much more explicit could Christ have made it? When we ask, we shall receive. We just have to be really devoted, truly. I mean, it can't be some careless, thoughtless wish. It has to be just, it has to be a, a genuine yearning of our hearts. But if it is, it will be granted yearning to have a doubt removed, <clears throat> yearning to have something, some obstacle removed, whatever it is. Okay, dear, please go ahead. Shirat Bala Roy was a young widow from Silhat who came to Udbodhan house for initiation from Holy Mother. 
her brother-in-law was a disciple of the mother. It was decided that she would receive initiation the next day. Her brother-in-law was to escort her. But the evening, the mother told him that Shirod Bala would be sick the next day. So the initiation would take place on the following day. After returning from Udbodhan, Shirod Bala was sick with dizziness. Despite her illness, she made herself ready. However, her brother-in-law did not show up. <laughs> then at noon, he came and told Shirod Bala what the mother had said the previous evening. The next morning, Shirod Bala and her brother-in-law went to Holy Mother. <coughs> she brought fruit and sweets, flowers and bell leaves <coughs> and a new sari for the initiation. She saw Holy Mother waiting, waiting for her near the door. Immediately, Holy Mother took her to the shrine and asked her to sit on an anasana. Shirod Bala had tied two rupees in the corner of her cloth for her return carriage fare. When Shirod Bala was about to sit on the asana, Holy Mother said, my child, you have come to take shelter in the master who renounced lust and gold. There are two rupees tied in the corner of your sari. Take them out. Wow. Immediately, <laughs> Shirod Bala removed those rupees and put them on the floor near the wall. Then the mother initiated her and reassured her saying, don't be afraid. Now you have been reborn. I have absorbed the results of your karma done in past lives. You are now pure and sinless. Oh, please oh, how, read that all how again. Wonder, how wonderful. Read the that next, sure. The next morning, Shirod Bala and her brother-in-law went to Holy Mother. She brought fruit and sweets, flowers and bell leaves, and a new sari for the initiation. She saw Holy Mother waiting for her near the door. Immediately, Holy Mother took her to the shrine and asked her to sit on an asana. Shirod Bala had tied two rupees in the corner of her cloth for her written carriage fare. When Shirod Bala was about to sit on the asana, Holy Mother said, my child, you have come to take shelter in the master who renounced lust and gold. There are two rupees tied in the corner of your sari. Take them out. Immediately, Shirod Bala removed those rupees and put them on the floor near the wall. Then the mother initiated her and reassured her saying, don't be afraid. Now you have been reborn. I have absorbed the results of your karma done in past lives. You are now pure and sinless. Beautiful, Brother Shankar. Yes. Beautiful. You are now pure and sinless. Hmm. Jaima. Okay. Well, let's just pause there sure. and see if anyone has a comment from their own wisdom or experience or any concern or question they would like to raise? Uh, Brother Shankara. Yes, Sham. Uh, when Mas Thakur was alive, did Mother, Holy Mother display all these powers? Powers are... The, 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 the short answer is no. But there was, a, there was a, if you remember very early in this chapter, or this uh, sub-chapter, <clears throat> there was a story of what happened when she was living in the Nahabat. And so it isn't as if they weren't there. It's simply, you know, she and the master would play a game, you know. Someone would come to the master and ask for something and he would say oh no you have you have to go to ramlal's aunt for that that's what he called uh holy mother ramlal's aunt you have to go to ramlal's aunt for that and so the, they would go to that the, to her out in the nahabat 
And then she would say, oh, no, 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 that's not me. You, you go back to the master here. And they would, they would bounce this person back and forth two or three times. Now, just exactly why, what it was that was being done uh, with that person, what, what was, you know, one can only surmise that the impediments were being removed. As the, as the person had to deal with what they were dealing with in this game that they were playing. So the mother had the powers, but she deferred always to the master about uh, these things. But uh, if I remember correctly, that early story had to do with Yoganma. Let's go, go back to the beginning and just see what that was. Uh, 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 please, Haima. I mean, don't lose our place, but just... You want me to read that uh, to paragraph one more time, Brother Shankara? Yeah, sure. Read it for Shah. Sure. The next morning, Shirodpala and her brother-in-law went to Holy Mother. No, 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 no. I'm talking about going back to the beginning of this subhead, oh. where it talks about the Holy Mother's omniscience. There's oh, some story about what happened at the Nahabat. Ah, so co completely start from the beginning. Oh, no, no, we don't have to start over from the beginning. Just read that, that what happened. He asked, did mother display these powers while the master was still alive? And the answer is yes. And I, I don't remember clearly myself what it was that was said, but there's something at the beginning of this subhead that uh, that uh, answers that question okay before the omniscience yes yes i will see no it's it comes after holy mother's omniscience it comes oh, after that it comes afterwards let me just look at just it re read read on and something that happened at the nahabat with yoganma i think <clears throat> let me go back and see where it is Kolakma, yoganma. Or it may have been Golapma. It might have been with Golapma. I think so. Okay, okay. Yoginma replied, there it is. In the early days when Holy Mother was staying at the Nahabat in Dakshineshwar, Yoginma would, would visit her and the master once a week. Yoginma used to worship Lord Shiva in her Calcutta residence ah. every day. And she used bilva leaves for the ritual. She would pick fresh bilva leaves from the Dakshineshwar garden and carry them to Calcutta. But by the time of worship, the leaves were dried up. One day the mother asked, Yogin, do you worship using dried bilva leaves? Surprised, Yogin Ma replied, yes, I do mother. How do you know about it? The mother calmly said, during my meditation this morning, I saw you worshiping with dried bilba leaves. So there's your answer, Sean. Yeah, she can really. Yeah, she, well, she, she has, has the, she has, she, she has clairvoyance. She has, she, has, <clears throat> she has clairvoyance and clairaudience. So does that answer your question, Sean? Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Okay. You want me to move on from the where I left, Brother Shankara? Yes, please do. Okay, Gokuldas D met Holy Mother in Udboden House in 1909 when he was a student. He asked Swami Saradananda for a picture of the mother. The Swami told him that he could have one if he would worship it every day. Gokuldas decided not to take the picture because he was then studying for a BA degree in Rangoon, Burma. When he returned to Rangoon after his vacation, he became seriously ill and almost lost hope for his life. However, he experienced the mother, mother's presence and gradually recuperated from that illness. In October 1911, Gokuldas took a break from his studies and returned to Calcutta. During this time, M taught him how to chant the Gita and the chanting. Gokuldas continued to visit Holy Mother regularly in Udbodhan. 
he felt that it was through her grace that he had recovered from his illness. One day he went for a walk on the bank of the Ganges and found the mother sitting on the lower step of the gut, repeating her mantra. From a distance, he began to recite a hymn from the Chandi in a low voice. Oh, mother, you're pleasing. Yeah, more pleasing than all the pleasing things and exceedingly beautiful. You are indeed the supreme goddess beyond the high and low. Holy Mother too, turned towards Gokuldas, raised her hands and blessed him, and again became absorbed in Japa. <clears throat> One evening, while massaging the mother's feet with the medicated oil for her rheumatism, Swami Arupananda silently prayed to have the mother's disease in his own body so that she would be cured. The mother smiled a little and then said to him, my son, what are you thinking? You live long, I am old. How much longer shall I live? You should not think like that. May the master grant you a long life. Saying so, she put her hand on Arupananda's head and blessed him. Now, you know, we think, oh, this happened to Arupananda. You know, it couldn't happen to us. Well, it can happen to you. It can indeed happen to you. Don't think that you cannot have a visit from the mother and have her bless you. This is not supposition. This is not, this is not, this is not paratry as we were saying earlier. The mother can come and bless you. And just don't doubt it for a moment. Just hold that thought in your heart and ask for what you want. And then be patient and persevering but live in the expectation that it will happen. So would you repeat that, what, what you just read, please, so Definitely. that people will know what it is I'm talking about. Yes. One evening while massaging the mother's feet with medicated oil for her rheumatism, Swami Arupananda silently prayed to have the mother's disease in his own body so that she would be cured. The mother smiled a little and then said to him, my son, what are you thinking? You live long, I am old. How much longer shall I live? You should not think like that. May the master grant you a long life. Saying so, she put her hand on Arupananda's head and blessed him. Yes. Lalit Mohan Saha of Dhaka recalled, in 1918, while living in Calcutta, I was suffering from terrible restlessness of the mind. I was piqued and decided not to visit the mother anymore. But my friends persuaded me to go to Udbodhan house. There I saw many devotees waiting to bow down to the mother. They bowed down one after another and she did not say a single word to anyone. At last, when I bowed down to her, she affectionately said, my son, are you keeping well? In a peak, peak voice, I answered, yes, mother, I'm fine. The mother smiled and said to me, what is this, my son? This is the mind's nature. Simply because of it, should you behave this way? In 1914, Mahendranath Gupta of Barisal received initiation from Holy Mother. And then in 1915, he went to Jairampati to see her. Mahendra reminisced. I had a desire to offer flowers and, and sandal paste at the mother's feet. 
I wondered where I could get those things in this unfamiliar place. Meanwhile, a niece of the mother brought flowers and sandal paste to me and conveyed her message that, I, that if I wanted to offer these, I should go to her now and offer them. Wow. You see, read that again. Read this again. Yes, in 1914, Mahendranath Gupta of Barisal received initiation from Holy Mother. All right, and now, then, wait, wait, just. Yeah. Now, a year later. Yes. In 1915, so he'd been practicing for a year. Yeah. It wasn't that, you know, this was just something that happened instantly. He'd been practicing what she gave him for a year. So the relationship had deepened, ripened. So now, read it again from the beginning. Yes, in 1914, Mahendranath Gupta of Barisal received initiation from Holy Mother. And then in 1915, he went to Jairampati to see her. Mahendra reminisced. I had a desire to offer flowers and sandal paste at the mother's feet. I wondered where I could get these things in this unfamiliar place. Meanwhile, a niece of the mother brought flowers and sandal paste to me and conveyed her message that if I wanted to offer these, I should go to her now and offer them. Beautiful. Pretty, pretty remarkable, isn't it? Very remarkable, extremely. Swami Tanmayananda recalled, one day on my way to Jairampati from Kolpara, I was thinking that I would be very happy if I could give a little personal service to the mother. When I arrived there, I found the mother seated with her legs, stretched out in front of her. A cup of oil was on the ground next to her. I began to rub one of her legs with the oil. The mother said, look, I feel acute pain in this leg. Rub oil on this leg and put some pressure on it. I massaged her leg for 25 minutes. Finally, the mother said, are you satisfied now? <laughs> oh, me. I Finally, the mother you. said, are you satisfied now? Satisfied now? <laughs> yeah. I shall now go to bathe, and then I shall have to worship the master. Take your lunch here before you leave. That was very nice. All, he had, to do, all he had to do, you know, but this was, this was again, someone, you know, he wasn't a, a greenhorn. He was a Swami already, you know, but this desire arose in his heart and was fulfilled. It happens, yeah. So there. One afternoon, yeah, one afternoon, Praf Prafulla Mukhi Basu, a woman disciple, saw Mandakini changing the covers of the mother's quilt and mattress. A thought flashed through her mind. I wish I could give this service to the mother. Then Mandakini left. The mother entered the room. When she saw her bed, she remarked, just to see my daughter, how she has muddled everything. She has reversed one cover for the other. <clears throat> My child, change the covers and make the bed again. Thus the <laughs> mother fulfilled Prafula Muthi's unexpressed wish. <laughs> that was really nice. Very and, nice. And, 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 you know, how spontaneously, yes. how spontaneously. Yes. Swami Bhumananda recalled one day Golapma was cutting vegetables and remarked, the mother gave me liberation today. We asked, what happened Golapma? Golapma told us, the other day a nun came from Varanasi and begged for money to pay her guru's debt. The mother never asks for money from anyone, nor does she ask anybody to give money to someone. But she whispered to me, Golak, what is the necessity of keeping those wands, gold coins? Why don't you give them to this nun? Dumbfounded, I asked, what are you talking about, mother? She replied, 
Well, I'm talking about the wealth that you have been holding on to all these years, like a miser. <laughs> in, fact, in fact, I had saved these gold coins in my house secretly for many years. I brought them from my home and gave them to the nun. Now my mind is light and carefree. Yeah. Well, How did she say that the mother had given her? The mother had given her liberation. Yes. Liberation from this little miserliness. Attachment, attachment, attachment. to gold mines. Yeah. And and I'm sure that Golap Mod never told her she was keeping these coins. I don't you know. know. Mother simply knew it. That's what we're talking about, omniscience. Mm -hmm. So uh what a sweet story. Yeah. Read that again from the that yes. Mother gave her liberation. Okay, sure. Swami Bhumananda recalled, one day Golakma was cutting vegetables and remarked, the mother gave me liberation today. We asked, what happened Golakma? Golakma told us, the other day a nun came from Varanasi and begged for money to pay her guru's debt. The mother never asked for money from anyone nor does she ask anybody to give money to someone. But she whispered to me, Golap, what is the necessity of keeping those ones, gold coins? Why don't you give them to this nun? Dumbfounded, I asked, what are you talking about, mother? She replied, well, I'm talking about the wealth that you have been holding on to all these years like a miser. <laughs> In fact, I had saved three gold coins in my house secretly for many years. I brought them from my home and gave them to the nun. Now my mind is light and carefree. Golap must find an, yes. Do you want to, me to stop there, Brother Shankar? No, let's just, let's just stop and see if anyone has any comments or questions. You know, this is, this is what we're doing. We're, we're gathering together to study the art of spirituality. So let's do that. Anything at all from anyone? Any comment or something from your own wisdom or experience? Is that, you know, we've all had these wonderful, you know, the, those of us who've been doing this a while, and we have some things to say. And otherwise, if we're, if we're, we may have a question or a concern. So please express either anything from anyone <clears throat> okay just as a reminder mm -hmm. because i noticed that some people didn't come until eight o'clock right. um, we sent a bulletin today i know that some of you didn't have a chance to read it yet but from now on the week and until further notice at least I shouldn't say from now on, who in the world knows. But until further notice, the weekday classes will start at 7.30. RIT will be at 6.30. The weekday classes, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday classes, will start at 7.30. <clears throat> the reason for this is I, I'm finding I need to go to bed earlier at night. And so, uh, uh, and the fact that the classes will be over at 8.30 or shortly thereafter will be uh, uh, congenial and auspicious for me. So uh, if you can manage to come at 7.30 for the classes, that's when we'll start. Anything else from anyone? Any comments or questions? Okay, read on, dear. Just go back a few lines. In fact, I had saved three gold coins in my house secretly for many years. I brought them from my home and gave them to the nun. Now my mind is light and carefree. Golapma's financial condition was poor, so she had kept those three gold coins in case of any difficulty. But the omniscient mother released her from attachment to them so that she could depend wholly on God so that she could depend wholly on God. Now, is that a demand? Is that something that we must do? Not at all. No, not at all. Not at all. But I tell you, 
you know, if we ask for what is auspicious for us, some things like this may happen for us. We will be freed of our attachments and our aversions because that's what's necessary. As long as we have attachments and aversions, we will have to return to human form. Hmm. When we're ready to say that the human form is no longer auspicious for us, then these things will happen, is our understanding. The next, next side heading is giver of liberation. I could read a paragraph, another eight minutes, Brother Shankar. Oh, yes, you know, please okay. go ahead. Please go sure. ahead. Giver of liberation. Liberation is the final goal of human life. All beings consciously or unconsciously seek freedom because freedom is the nature of the soul. <coughs> According to Vedanta, there are three kinds of liberation. Jivan Mukti or liberation while living in this body. Videha Mukti or liberation upon leaving the body. And Krama Mukti or liberation while passing through the higher realms. I'll read one more time. Liberation is the final goal of human life. All beings consciously or unconsciously seek freedom because freedom is the nature of the soul. Let's stop there just for a moment. Sure. Freedom is the nature of the soul or Atman. It is, it, as Swami Vivekananda points out in Jnana Yoga, it never was bound. It is not now bound. It will never be bound. Freedom is its very nature. It, it, it is not that the Atman is free. It is freedom itself. So the embodied being is constantly seeking to reflect that perfect liberation, that, that perfect freedom that already exists within the Atman or as, as, as the Atman. It doesn't exist within the Atman. That was clumsy speaking. It, it, that, that is the Atman. So, and by the way, that last word dear in that paragraph is, is pronounced realms. Oh, realms. Okay, that's right, realms. Sorry, thank you, Brother Shankar. Please, you want please, me to read, please read again from the beginning. Sure. Liberation is the final goal of human life. All beings consciously or unconsciously seek freedom because freedom is the nature of the soul. According to Vedanta, there are three kinds of liberation. Jivan Mukti or liberation while living in this body. Videha Mukti, or liberation upon leaving the body, and Krama Mukti, or liberation while passing through the higher realms. 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 Okay, thank you. Higher realms. The scriptures so, say... Hi, Maji. Yes. No, say, Brother Shankara, do you know what this uh, Kama Mukti is in the higher realms? Yes. Um, each of the incarnations has told us that they create a place for us uh, when uh, it, Ramakrishna said he had created a loka, a, a place for us. If we're almost finished with our, uh, with our attachments and aversions and the other fetters, if we're almost finished and our desire for freedom and liberation from taking human form is sincere and pure, then we go to this loka. Uh, uh, Vishnu uh, 
has such a place. I've forgotten the name of it now. Vaikuntha? Uh, you mean Vaikuntha, Brother Shankar? I, I, yeah, I'm Vaikuntha. not sure if it's Vaikuntha. I think Vaikuntha is his own abode. Yeah, but own in, in any event, um, the, these, these, this is, this is, so then you finish your, uh, the last of your lessons, so to speak, uh, in that, in that loka. And, and Ramakrishna says clearly, it's in the great master, in the divine play, that he has created such a place for us. The Swamis don't like to talk about it much. You don't hear much about it from them because they want us to strive for Jivan Mukta. They want to, and then the Swamis will tell you, well, you know, if you've taken Diksha, you know, you're guaranteed. This is what Swami Prabhupada told us. If you've taken guarantee, taken Diksha and stuck on, in other words, practiced, you're guaranteed the second. What is that called? It's Videha Mukti. Videha Mukti. And the third one is Krama, Krama, not Kama. It's Krama, K-R-A-M-A. -A. Yeah, right. Uh, krama, Krama is krama rooted in the word uh, for action. You know, that's that's what it means. That you, there's still something to be done. So Krama, you know, uh, Kriya, Krama, all those words. Um, so. Uh, But those of us who have taken Diksha have persisted. Uh, we don't have to go to Varanasi. The master, as mother said, the master is Varanasi itself. He himself is Varanasi. So that which is promised, if you go to Varanasi, you will receive from the master at uh, the time of passing from the body. That is to say that mother herself, this is what the master saw when he went to Varanasi, the, the, the mother will untie the last of the knots of the heart. These are what? These are the fetters that are holding us here. Mother unties those knots of the heart and the master whispers the mantra of liberation in your ear. This is... So does that answer your question, Shailash? Is that good? Yes, yes. I was just curious what is Krama Mukti. But yeah, yeah well, I, think, uh, I, but, I, you know, I think we need to think about the second one as well. You know, most of us. We all know what Jivan Mukta means. If if you you know if you and it, you don't have to achieve Nirvikalpa Samadhi to be Jivan Mukta. Savikalpa Samadhi will do just fine. <laughs> because what oh. there's Savikalpa Samadhi transforms you. Once you've had that experience, you cannot go backwards. You 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 know the truth of the of, of what is and 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 that the fact that you, you are that, that you are part of that. Which is what's pointed to when, by the saying Tattva Masi. Now, Nirvikalpa Samadhis, as Swami Prabhupada used to say, very humorously, he would smile. When people wanted to talk to him about Nirvikalpa Samadhi, he'd say, Oh, my dear, or my, my, he didn't say my dear, he said, What? My child, something like that. Anyway, he would say, First, achieve Savikalpa Samadhi. Then we'll talk about Nirvikalpa Samadhi. You know, so uh, it's it's up to each of us to make the effort to purify. Well, this is what Christ said: "Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God." And that's what happens when you have Savikalpa Samadhi. Uh, it, it's it's an experience. You're still within time, space, and causation. But the very highest realm of time, space, and causation, the highest of uh, vidya maya, and so you you witness the truth of your being, 
as a part. As Hanuman, Rama asked Hanuman, Hanuman, how do you how do you look on me? And um, Hanuman replied, Well, when I am in my ordinary state of awareness, I am your servant and you are the master. I am your servant and you are the master. When I am in meditation, I see, oh, you are the whole, I am a part. I am a part of that, not apart from it, but a part of it. I am, you are the whole, and I am part of that. When I achieve the highest, that is nirvikalpa, I see that you are me and I am you. And this, of course, is the same thing that Meister Eckhart was pointing to when he said the same eye with which I see God is the eye with which God sees me. So it's, this is the, so those are the three um, states of awareness as, as uh, described by Hanuman. So I think that'll do it for this evening. I think so. It's almost 3, 6, 30. Yeah. So we'll just start reading from the beginning of that subhead again next week. Yes, definitely, Brother Shankar. It's a very just, important one. Just to review, just to review, you know, we're, we're studying the life of Holy Mother. Uh, we're, we're at the part where she is revealing herself as the divine being in various ways. And so uh, next week at 7.30 on Tuesday, we'll, we'll begin the class again. Any final thoughts or questions or concerns for him and from anyone? It was a very good, um, good text. To oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, so we, if, if, if we give it a moment's thought, we, we just pour out our hearts in gratitude to Swami Chetanananda for creating these books. Got it. You know, over and over and over again, he works and works and works to create these books. You know, I mean, it's not easy. <laughs> he has to, you know, it isn't that he doesn't enjoy it. He does enjoy it. But it's still, even though we may enjoy something, it doesn't mean it's necessarily easy. You know, he has to he has to do the research, and he's very thorough in his research and very loving in his research. You know, he he reaches out to people and and persuades them most lovingly to share with him what what they have that might be of use. And then works for years to prepare these books. And first he publishes them in Bengali through the order. And, uh, and then after they're successful. Uh, and uh, then as a, I don't even know whether it's the third or fourth edition by the time he gets to around to, and it takes him about five years of work to, to produce then one in English. So, uh, the Swami is is really quite quite remarkable and his desire to offer us the the truth as best as he knows how to present it about these divine beings. So until next time, dears. Uh, Thank you. Dearly beloved, Om Asatoma Satgamaya, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, Mrityorma Amrutangamaya, Abir Abir Moiti. Oh, dearly beloved Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real. Lead us from this realm of endless noise and relentless delusion to thine abode of silence, serenity, clarity, and peace. 
lead us from darkness and ignorance to the brilliance of thy wisdom and love. Lead us from death to immortality. Light us through and through. Light us through and through with thy everlasting shining presence. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Peace, peace. Peace be unto us and to all beloved beings everywhere. Jai Shri Guru Maharaj Ki Jai. Durga Durga Durga. May we be safe. May we be healthy. May we be cheerful. May we have peace of mind. May we go forward in the loving and protective embrace of the divine being as our mother and father. So until tomorrow night, Wednesday night, for those of you who want to join us for the class on Jnana Yoga, uh, see you next time. Good night. The weekend, the weekend uh, class and talk remain at the same time, by the way. So it's noon on Saturday, 11 a.m. on Sunday. And those times haven't changed. Only the weekday classes. Perfect. Good night, all. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Haima. You're such a good reader. Oh, you read such, I'm honored. Thank you. You read with such good expression and uh, such understanding. Thank you, dear. Sure, you're welcome. I'm honored, Brother Shankar. Good night.